Welcome everybody to Bedbug Central TV. I'm your host, Jeff White. And today what I want to do is I want to provide you guys with a brief overview of whole structure heating. And what that means is that we take heat and we introduce it into the apartment or unit or whatever you know is being lived in and we bring the entire temperature of that whole unit up to at least 120 degrees Fahrenheit and then we hold that heat for let's say at least two hours maybe four hours every company is going to be different on what they recommend but either way we hold it for a set amount of time and what that does is we know that bed bugs are susceptible to heat and if it's done properly and all the heat gets to all of the bugs you can actually kill all at least most and maybe even all of the bed bugs inside a home and so obviously this can be a very valuable tool with bed bug management so what I wanted to do is give you a brief overview of the technology and almost most importantly some things you need to consider if you're thinking about using this to deal with the bed bug infestation that you have in your home okay so when it comes to whole structure heating there's really three different options that you have available to you there's propane powered heat and what that means is they use propane to create the heat and blow it into the home or electrically powered heat and inside that one there are actually two different options there's a situation where they use the electricity that's actually provided by the home itself so they basically bring the heaters in the home and they plug them in and then they heat the unit up that way and then there's electricity where they bring a generator on site and they run the electricity into the house and then turn the heaters on and power the heaters that way and heat the unit up that way. Now as far as the pros and cons and, and, you know, and what I recommend, that's not necessarily that important at this time because to be completely honest with you, whole structure heating as far as bed bugs are concerned is a relatively new technology. And in the area that you live, you may not even have a company that can provide this type of service. And if you do, there's a, probably a decent chance you may only have one company in the area that can provide it. So at this point, I'm not sure that it's very important that we go over which one's best and which one does this and that. Just be aware that you have three different options. You definitely, before you get all excited and, and say, this is what I want to do, you want to make sure you have a company in your area that can provide it. And then if you do have, you know, multiple companies in the area and it's something you're concerned about, you can always shoot me an email, jeff.white at bedbugcentral.com, and I can give you a little feedback as to pros and cons on each one as far as what I'm aware of. But more importantly is what you need to be aware of when you're considering this an option. And the number one thing that I can say, and this surprised me a little bit when I started learning about heat, is that clutter is a heat's worst enemy. Meaning that, you know, if your unit is over cluttered, you have lots of stuff in it, it could present some very serious challenges for the company providing the heat treatment. Um, that clutter actually absorbs a lot of the heat and it takes a really long time to heat the unit up at times. And on top of that, it provides bed bugs places to hide that the heat may not be able to get to, even with the heat company moving stuff around. So if you have an overly cluttered unit, you're definitely going to want to consider trying to reduce that clutter somehow. It, it's, it's extremely important for the efficacy of the bed bug heat treatment. And what this also, you know, ties into is the fact that a heat treatment is really just a treatment that at that given time will get rid of the bugs in the unit. And what I mean by that is that, you know, if you take a backpack with you the day of the treatment and you then bring it back after the heat treatment is completed, if there's a bed bug on that backpack, your problem is going to start right back over again. With heat, there is no residual activity. So if bed bugs are brought right back in after the heat treatment, you're going to have the problem right back over again. And that's definitely, you know, something you're going to need to be thinking about because, you know, I talked about reducing clutter before. Well, some people are like, oh, well, I'll just throw it in bags and I'll take it out and put it in my car for the day while the heat treatment is going on. Well, who's to say that there aren't bed bugs on those clothes and now you're just going to bring them right back in after, you know, the heat treatment's complete. So, you know, there's some things you need to keep in mind when you're reducing that clutter. And remember that heat is just a standalone treatment. There's no residual activity. And that way, you know, you can just bring them right back in. So you need to be aware of that. You need to understand how bed bugs move and what you can do to reduce the chance that bed bugs are brought back in. And then the last thing I just wanted to mention real quick, and it kind of ties into the other two things, is that if you do contract a pest control company to heat treat your unit or apartment or whatever, 
I definitely recommend that you'd like to see them possibly using at least a targeted approach of pesticide. You know, heat can stand alone. And what that means is that you can just use heat and no pesticide, and you can solve some bed bug problems with just heat. It is possible. And the better the service team that's carrying out the heat treatment, the better the treatment will be. That being said, there are areas that we definitely have concern over that the heat may not get to. One example is, say, a wall void. You know, we don't know how well the heat penetrates wall voids. And if there's bugs inside that wall void, you may get rid of 98% of the bugs in the unit, but that 2% in the wall void may be fine, and then your problem persists. And one way we can help address this, it may not, it's not 100% cure, but at least help address this, is maybe by, say, applying some dust into that wall void. And this is something you may want to see the pest control company carrying out the service doing using a targeted approach of pesticide just to kind of address concern areas um, it can definitely help the treatment and you know hopefully make it more a, a better treatment and possibly get rid of the bed bugs so i hope that gives you a brief overview of whole structure heating and some things you need to think about if you're considering an option and uh, if you have any other questions please email me jeff.white at bedbugcentral.com i'd be more than happy to answer questions and please if you want to hear additional information about this email me your questions and it's definitely something I plan on talking more about in the future. I just wanted to give you guys something to start with if it's something you're considering. Okay everybody, well I hope this helps you make the right decision for your situation and if you have any questions or comments you know the email address and I will hopefully talk to everybody soon enough.